Pac-Man Chomp Champs is dying. Okay, I'm being dramatic, but we need to seriously discuss what this game does right, wrong, and all the little details that make up this complete package. Okay, so before I start rambling, I gotta say Chomp Champs is still a fun game. I haven't become some sort of turncoat that went through the Sonic cycle in one day and needs to feel special for internet points. If anything, my greatest accomplishment was being noticed by the official Pac-Man account as I played alongside them. Here, maybe? Let's go. I see Tay in that maze with Nicole. I've definitely <laughs> played with Tay before. Tay is online a lot. Oh my god, I'm playing with the, the goats now? Oh my. Now, I normally don't tend to make quick follow-up videos as I'm not the type of person to hop on drama or speculation. However, this was a special case that interests me personally. And hey, if you or anyone you know works at Namco, send them this video as I'd like to share my honest thoughts without sounding like an entitled brat. However, over the last few weeks, I've had quite a few people in my DMs showing me this shocking post that was made by the Daily Pac-Man account. Is this how you get your sick kicks? What? It's just an ordinary crabby- OH MY GOODNESS! It's pretty self-explanatory. The game is not doing well, and I double-checked before the making of this video to be as accurate as possible. However, one thing I want to clarify is that this is only the Steam player base. This does not account for Nintendo, PlayStation, or Xbox. So while an all-time player base of 52 sounds bad, you have to account for three other platforms that could vary in size and numbers. Now, as I've said in the past, when you love something, you have to criticize it. I merely want this game to be successful, and I want to get my voice out there to help make a change. With that said, let's get into... So I'm gonna be quick about this part because I have more or less said this in the previous video. So let's do a bit of a lightning round. Personally, the idea of having a bunch of interconnected mazes while different Pac-Men chase each other is a fun time. And it's always funny to invade someone else's maze and cause some chaos. Also, the maze designs are a step up from Pac-Man 99, going for something more original like the CE games. Now, being able to save and utilize power-ups like the Dazer and Shield items add a nice bit of depth in letting you play more mind games with your opponents other than just running into an item and it automatically activates. I cannot stress how the new music is an absolute joy to listen to, and the different maze skins and outfits are a welcome addition, with the ones calling back to Namco's older IPs being a big plus. For example, that Klonoa hat is never coming off of me. Now, with the positive out of the way, let's look at... Holy shit. This is my garbage, yeah. but I can't stop listening. Yeah. Legalized nuclear bomb. Now, price is a touchy subject, and I feel every decision can be tied to this one thing, so I'm gonna try to avoid bringing up the price unless it's absolutely necessary for the sake of discussion. I know, I know, leave the multi billion dollar company alone. But that's not my point. I'm trying to critique the game on what's available versus just its price. I also included some Steam reviews to get a general idea of what some of the common complaints are outside of my own. So, first and foremost, my biggest gripe is that this is an online only game. I cannot stress how every time I start to form an attachment with a game like this, it's finally ripped from me because player counts can't be met, sales are not up to snuff with the higher ups, or some other arbitrary reason. And you know what, I wouldn't mind that if the game at least had an offline mode to compensate, so that way it can still be enjoyed when the plug is pulled sometime in the future. Seeing a developer's work go to waste honestly hurts me a lot. The next problem is the lack of content. If you strip down this game to its absolute bare essentials, you only have the elimination and rank modes to play. That's literally two modes, and to top it off, they're nearly identical to each other, with the exception of a few small differences. Again, I'm not gonna bring up price that much, but depending on what region you're based in, it can cost you a pretty penny. The final and most annoying problem is the bots. As echoed earlier in the tweet, the game seems to have a hard time getting full lobbies, and because of this, you end up getting an artificial experience while looking for other players. When looking through reviews and comments on Steam, this seems to be a very common occurrence, and it's quite frankly sad when you see people sending out SOS calls to see if your brand new game is even alive. Even people who left positive reviews are calling this out as a major disappointment. Now, when I say practical and dream suggestions, I'm trying to propose ideas that Namco could realistically add to the game that wouldn't take too much time or effort on their part. However, I am not a game dev, so take my opinions lightly. Dream suggestions refer to ideas that would take more time and effort to make, but would add to the game's overall enjoyment. I was originally going to categorize each suggestion, but I decided to just list off what's most relevant now and let you, the viewer, decide what would be best, even if you haven't played the game. Now, after consulting some of my friends on Discord and random reviews online, 
here are the best suggestions I could pull up and organize. Considering the game already has a lot of bots, an offline mode would be great for those who either have a poor or unstable connection. This could also be used as a high score mode so you could practice. Again, I promised I would keep my comparisons to Pac-Man 99 minimal, but one thing it did right was that I still have access to the really fun offline modes even though the game isn't playable online anymore, and these offline modes are good enough to be their own separate games. While the in-game ones are serviceable, this would give players a reason to come back on a daily basis. It's extremely simple, but I feel like the pull of something like that is enough to bring back more players. While I don't think something as simple as a new outfit could fix the game's fundamentals, the way about getting them could be changed. As pointed out by many, showing off your unique Pac-Man is one of the game's biggest highlights. One suggestion I like is having achievements tied to cosmetics. Players naturally love to show off their rare items, and this would encourage others to do the same. Pac-Man has over the years become more and more associated with speed thanks in part with the Championship Edition series, and while speed should not be the primary focus, it should help make things more exciting. In the case for Chomp Champs, the game never really gets fast or frantic. Something as little as increasing the game speed after a while, or a player or a map is eliminated would go a long way to fuel that competitive edge or just frantic, hey, we gotta win. One of the biggest shocks to me when playing this game was how abrupt everything was. Again, as pointed out in Discord, there's no fanfare or pause or anything before you're declared the winner. There's barely any indication on remaining players, and winning the game feels so unceremonious. What? 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 Bro! Compare that with the Stadia version of Chomp Champs, and when you won, this would happen. As pointed out in my last video, while it's fun to have everyone get together in a lobby, there's almost no incentive to play with friends other than just seeing them pop up. Sure, you can try to work together as a fun personal challenge, but the game clearly wasn't meant for that. And I'm sure we all joke about how this game looks like a Fortnite lobby, but let's go all out with it. Something as simple as having lobbies for duos, trios, and squads would encourage more friends to play together. Making an option so these lobbies can be private and offline would also help add to the game's longevity and enjoyment. One quality of life change that many haven't pointed out yet is account linking. It's no surprise many people tend to double dip on games on multiple platforms. That way their progress can stick around with them no matter where they go. So imagine my shock when I got Chomp Champs on PC and saw I couldn't carry my progress from Switch to PC. I mean, since it's an online only game and every user has a unique ID, it should be possible, but sadly it's not. At the time of this video, there's no customer support for this game, and believe me, I tried. What's funnier is that on the official website, Chomp Champs isn't even listed among the new games, and I find that to be confusing and concerning. I want Namco to hear our voices, but I don't want to be disrespectful just spamming the social media account with pointless complaints. So the best thing I can advise you to do is politely spam the social media accounts with your suggestions? Unless you got a better idea, please let me know. I'm still gonna play this game from time to time, but I can't say I feel hopeful for the future of it. A game shouldn't need endless updates, cosmetics, and microtransactions to feel complete. What it needs is a solid gameplay loop to drive people to it. And at the time of this video, a paid game having a free-to-play structure with very limited options is not gonna cut it. So while I have my distaste for certain elements in this game, I do not blame the developers for these changes whatsoever. While more could have been done, I understand it's usually the higher ups that call the shots on how a game should be crafted, sold, and advertised. However, Namco should have been well aware that shutting down a game like Pac-Man 99 would have a lot of kickback, and Chomp Champs should have aimed to be just as polished, refined, and varied as its replacement. What's even crazier is that Pac-Man 99 was a Nintendo Switch exclusive game, so to have the general public say that they would have preferred to play a game locked to an online subscription is kind of wild. So like I said in the previous video, should you get Chomp Champs? Well, I'll leave that up to you. There's a lot of good, questionable, and bad decisions at play here, but the core gameplay is fun. There's just a lot of things that need to be addressed. Even if you did or didn't buy the game, tell me what your thoughts are. Do you think it would have done better as a free-to-play game with microtransactions? Or should it have gotten more development time as a paid game? For now, unless there's a significant update to the game, I have no reason to make another video on this topic for the foreseeable future. Again, a big thank you to the developers of the game for working with what they had. 
those of you watching and my Kofi members on screen right now. See you all next video, and remember, stay foxy. Pac-Man World Blinky Clyde.